Good afternoon. Welcome to the Headwater Science Center 330 Science Show. Every day uh, for many months we've been doing shows about science and it has a new name now it's called the science show today um i'm here with two guests my um from boston and they're going to be going to the concordia language villages german program to valse and um i've spent a lot of time in valse too so i want you to look for the butterflies and moths and the amazing insects that are at valse and i know that there will be fireflies at valse right now too great so we are um speaking of international travel this show is also going to be traveling international. Today we are starting in Mexico, in central Mexico, um, in a forest. Um, and this is a protected forest. We have to be kind of careful of this forest because people are cutting around the trees around this protected forest to make, uh, to grow more avocados. But we're in the sanctuary here where, um, where these butterflies, monarch butterflies, are spending the winter. Okay? And these are going to go through several generations. So it's becoming to be springtime. Maybe you will just go together. Okay? So our monarchs are going to start. It's getting to be early spring. Um, and if you're interested in following monarch uh, migration, I encourage you to uh, go to a website called Journey North. And um, you, as an individual or as a school group or any other kind of group, can uh, be part of people who watch monarchs as they travel north. So our generation, our first generation of monarchs, is starting out here in Mexico, and they're going to come and fly several hundred kilometers to right here. This is about in Texas. And in Texas, they find some beautiful, wonderful um, milkweed plants that are growing there, and they feast on some milkweed. They're very happy. They find mates. They lay some wonderful eggs. But then their life is over. So these, these monarchs end their life, they die, unfortunately. <laughs> but their, their babies hatch, okay? The babies hatch up, they turn into caterpillars. And this is the second generation. And the second generation flies a little bit further north. A little bit further north, come a little bit closer to the last generation though, so that we're not, the camera can help. And they find another wonderful patch of, of beautiful um, milkweed. They have, they eat up, they live a while, they find a wonderful mates, and then they lay their eggs, and they die again. But their, their eggs hatch, eat some wonderful yummy um, milkweed. We'll look at their life cycle in a bit, but that's generation two. They fly a little bit further north, generation three, and they go through the whole cycle again. So butterflies, mate, eggs, die, caterpillars, and chrysalis, okay, and emerge, and go again. So this is generation number four. We're coming up now, we're getting maybe to Iowa, okay, and the same thing, find some nice food, find a nice mate, make some beautiful eggs, and then you die, and and these butterflies, now we have coming to us, this is the super generation, probably generation five or so, of the monarch butterflies. And you notice this super monarch butterfly is coming to us with antenna and wonderful wings. Why don't you turn around and show us your lovely wings? Mm -hmm. And one, two, three, four, five, six legs. And also, because this is, this butterfly sometimes gets hungry, this butterfly has a special kind of mouth. Not really a mouth, but a special way to eat. It's called a proboscis. And can fly around, find something yummy, such as a flower, and right. stick the proboscis in there. And you know how the butterfly tells if uh, something tastes good or not? Something is good to eat? We taste with our mouth and our noses, but butterflies taste with their feet. All right, so we're gonna say applause to our, to our multi-generational uh, butterflies. <laughs> Vielen Dank, Schmetterlinge. We'll be reaching in German too. One, setzen Sie euch wieder hin. Okay, so we have our super, our super generation of monarch butterfly 
Now, spends a lot of time up here in northern Minnesota, maybe all the way up in Ontario or Manitoba. And then this generation, super generation butterfly, flies all the way, carried in the winds. Come on over. Flying in the winds, flying in the winds, all the way back to Mexico to spend the winter with some more buddies. Well, not the buddies, the other buddies who came down to in a beautiful tree, thousands and thousands of them. All right, applause for our magnificent monarchs. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so today's show is um, in honor and memory of Maureen O'Brien, who uh, is a painter, and I invite our guests to, after the show, to go and look at our murals down on the floor. She was a painter um, who lived in Bemidji, and she just passed away, I believe, yesterday. So um, we're really saddened by her loss. She is, uh, was a great, a wonderful gift to our community. It really helped us a lot. Her, her daughter volunteered with us for years and years mm -hmm. and years, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a, a great loss. Um, she was just uh, an inspiration to, to all of us and a wonderful observer of nature. And so, in speaking of observing nature, um, <clears throat> we have a few of the signs that I have, some of them here. Um, we also have, if you go onto the exhibit floor, um, sort of towards the back, close to our fish tank, our saltwater fish tank, we have a collection of, of butterflies and moths. And any of you who like scientific words, does anyone know the word for the family of insects that includes butterflies and moths? Lepa, Lepidoptera. Bonus points, you are getting that. You are the bonus, the best participants I've seen in a long time. So looking at these, um, at these butterflies here, at these monarchs, um, first of all, how can we tell that they are butterflies and not moths? So um, we had our super generation, when it come back, butterfly, representing butterflies. And I'm representing okay. moths today. And you can see a little bit difference in our appearance. The antenna, right? So a butterfly has antenna that are uh, not as fuzzy and often will have a ball at the end, not always. But they're more, we can look at several examples. And moths have, almost always, will have antenna with feathery, kind of feathery shape. And we can look at some of them more up close in a moment. Okay? Moths also are usually more active at night and butterflies more active during the day. And a butterfly, when it, uh, when it goes through a transformation, right, becoming uh, um, uh, coming from a caterpillar to a butterfly, they make, a, they make a, 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 a chrysalis. And a chrysalis is hard on the outside, generally. And moths will have a, uh, like a, softer, a softer cocoon. Okay, if you think about a silk moth, right, they're often silky. All right, thank you very much. My transformation was very painful. It was very painful. I'm sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe we'll get this up close to the camera. I should be looking at what you can see and what you can't see now. Nothing. You got me. There's a little bit of delay here. So um, monarch butterflies, um, if you look at them up close, you can tell which ones are male and which ones are female. Anybody know how to tell the difference? So I have two male and two female here. And after I'm done talking about them, you can hold it and look at it up close. But the, the male have a sort of a spot on the lower wing. Am I holding that still enough? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what else do you notice about the female, how it's a little bit different from the male? Know you guys know the, the males first. have the spot? The males have the spot on the lower wing. And the females? The females, typically, their veins will be wider. Okay, typically their veins will be wider. That's a little bit harder to tell, but the thing is if you look for the spots. And I don't know if I have a good example here. We also have a look-alike. Um, a look-alike that uh, we can often find in North America. And I do not have an example of it, but you can, oh yes, I do. I have a picture here, and this is also, um, I want to give a plug to the person who made it. 
by um, Allison Barta. This one has also been involved with the Science Center. You can see, and actually this is very nice to look at them together, a monarch, and you can look at it up closer. Yep. Can you zoom into the monarch and the viceroy? So this is a monarch, and their wings tend to kind of go down a little bit, angle down. Yeah, you can come up close if you want, audience. And the viceroy, um, on their wings, the veins kind of form a line like that, that the, the monarch doesn't. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And, you know, it's not in my mind so important to be able to identify one or the other, but I like to know these kind of facts because it helps me to really be observant and to look closely and not to say, oh, there's a butterfly, but look to see what I can, what I can tell and what I can know about them. So that was our, our monarchs. Um, any, any questions about, oh, I forgot about my monarchs here. So this morning and last night, I was in my yard. And maybe, audience, why don't you come up? And generation, super generation, see if you can find on here. I have three, well, I found three monarch caterpillars. I know this is hard for the camera to do. See if you can find them. Where are my children? Is that there? Where are is the that... children? Oh, no, no that's, that's not one? That's I'm not sure what that is. Where are my children? Where are your children? See if you can find them. Oh, you found one there? Yeah, one goes in here. One is there. And oh, actually, I thought yes. that there were two. Oh. Maybe the camera, can you see oh, that? Oh, there. Yeah. There's one. And there's at least two. Maybe you can find eggs, too. I wasn't successful looking for eggs. One is bigger than that one. And one is smaller than the one you found. Hopefully, they didn't get lost. Is there inside here, maybe? Right here? Oh, yeah. This one. No? Hopefully, it didn't fall off. No. There were three. <laughs> there were oh. three. There's a child in there. A child where? Where is your child? <laughs> I thought I saw my child. Oh, in here! There. Look at him. There's oh, my child. Oh my here. goodness! Oh. My child. So you think that they're very obvious? Whoops. Whoops. Um, what do you notice looking at them? That is my child. Any, any observations? Interesting colors. Is still antennas or something? Yeah, so I think there's, you can see there's the antenna in the front, which you can see is the front, but if you look, I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but I'll kind of hold the leaf in the back. There are, it's actually hard to tell the front from the back. Yeah. So why would that be helpful for a caterpillar, for it to be not easy to tell the front from the back? Yeah, so many caterpillars have that, and I think, from what I've learned and read and observed, that's to be confusing, so a predator doesn't know which which way to attack. Or they yep. can run away from. Yep. Yep. Or so they can. Mm -hmm. French away. French away from. Yeah. And so they really like. Uh, monarchs need to have oh, milk Here's that. another one. This coloration is different. A little cutie, huh? Yeah. I should have taken. I did take a picture. I don't have any size. But I was actually noticed this caterpillar is noticeably larger yeah. than last night. My children. Your wow. children have grown. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And there's a third one here too, but I'm not sure where. Oh, he's oh right here. There. Yep. You see that? So we will leave this at the Headwater Science Center, and uh, you're welcome to come in and visit. And um, maybe we'll have to put some pictures out for people who can't come back in. He'll be at Vault Day. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But I can I can get pictures to your business manager. Cool. Um, I want to show you something else. I'll show it to the camera first, then we can pass it around to our audience. How's that looking, sir? Or maybe you guys can come up. I guess. We're, what do you notice here? And this string was added by someone trying to be helpful. Oh, is that coming out of the crystals? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Um, this is, um, a, a guest brought this in for us to show visitors. Um, this is a, a caterpillar, I mean, it was, was a caterpillar that made a chrysalis and was attempting to emerge but was on a tractor oh. and fell off. And uh, the kind person tried to, um, tried to, you know, help it, help it emerge, but um, 
And that's where the string would try to hang it back up again. But it didn't. But I think it's kind of interesting to see how they start out small and they pump the you know the fluids into their wings to make them make them bigger. Huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Yeah, if you want to look at it up close. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, you know, I should know that, um, but I don't know the number of days. A while, over a week. I can look that up, and you can look that up too. Yep. So I, I only, <laughs> I only know a few things. Uh, there's a lot more that I don't know than I do know. But I encourage you. Hopefully, this um, inspires people to look more. Um, another butterfly I brought in. This is what I've been seeing a lot. Um, oh. in my walks around the area. Is this yellow and black butterfly? Has anybody seen one like this before? It's like about two weeks. About two weeks? Yeah, I know it was over a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then how long are they in the chrysalis? It's a while too. Um, so it's several days. Yeah, a little less than a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a swallowtail, yellow, a tiger swallowtail. And um, this is a male, but keep your eyes out for females too. They'll have, they'll be very similar, but we'll have more blue on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You want to look at them if you'd like. And I also wanted to show you um, some examples of moths. And like I said, um, you can, uh, we invite you to look at more on our exhibit floor. Maybe I'll come up close and just pick on one so you can really see the antenna, the, the fuzzy antenna. Mm -hmm. and I, did, I don't think I mentioned this before, but moths tend to have less, uh, less vibrant colors, but that's not always true. Mm -hmm. So why do the butterflies have vibrant colors? What's the benefit of that? You know, I'm not sure. That is a good question. But usually it's a you know, signifier yeah. of... Of, po being of being poisonous. Or it's a display thing for mating. I don't know what right. Mm -hmm. right. right. With the monarchs, um, because they eat milkweed, they build up a poison in their body. And um, it's the, I wrote down the name of the poison, um, but it's similar to digitalis. Um, so it don't eat, don't eat monarchs. It's not good, you know, if you eat too many of them, it could make you very sick. Um, I wrote down, I like to learn new words. And... Um, it's called cardiac glycosides, are the name of the poison in, um, in monarchs. Um, so, um, so that's, po you know, for smaller animals than humans, you know, a smaller amount would be poisonous. And, and viceroys, I believe, are not poisonous. They eat other things. And so they use, they copy the monarch um, so that, and they look so similar that a lot of creatures are fooled and will not will not eat them. Mm -hmm. As I understand it, the milkweed is like not all that nutritious, and so yeah. the monarchs put in a lot of work to become poisonous, and then the viceroys just right. you know, get 99% of the benefit with mm -hmm. the work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've talked for quite a while. I can keep, I'm excited about this topic. We can talk quite a bit more. I did want to bring in a couple more things that you can observe. Um, so I was down uh, near the Mississippi River this morning and uh, this is a thing I usually keep in my canoe because my dog is good at sitting on it it's nice and warm and cozy for her um, but what what happened here where there's some aliens coming in they're not cicadas we are just south of the cicada uh, north of the cicada line. We don't have any cicadas here. That is a good guess. And they have a similar strategy of lots of them emerging at once. Mm -hmm. And they do spend a lot of time. These are similar to cicadas where they spend many years um, in, their, in their larval stage. Mm -hmm. They are. This is one of my favorite animals to see this time of year in Minnesota. Because when I see them, I know they're going to be fewer mosquitoes. These are dragonflies. So dragonflies, oh. um, if you can see, sorry, I'm 
set, change the camera so quickly on that on that white poster, and they are not to scale. There is a dragonfly larva, and they live many years. It could be up to seven years, depending on the type of species, underwater, and uh, emerge um, when the mosquitoes hatch. Um, and you can look closely. You guys can see there's a little hole in the back. A little hole on the back there where they've climbed out and they turn into dragonflies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Well, I could talk for hours about insects, um, but I think I've shared with you enough. Um, come on back to our 3.30 show every day. Um, every day we've been doing something different. We're very proud of that. Our hours now that it is summertime, we're open every day of the week. Um, from 9 to 9 30 to 5 p.m. except on Sundays when we're open from 1 to 5. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions out there? Oh there's more what? Oh yes more to say. Beltrami and thank you very much to all the members of the Beltrami Electrical Co-op including myself um, who participates in the Roundup program where when you get your bill you can choose to make it a nice round number and the extra cents goes to support um, our community programming. And another advertisement here, I wanted to adver uh, talk about some of the great things we have in our store, if you're interested in the life cycles of insects and other invertebrates. We have, and I think these are kind of cool to check out too, um, the life cycle of a mosquito. You can see the raft of many mosquito larvae and how they grow bigger and turn into our mosquitoes. And also the life cycle of an ant. And we often also have life cycles of butterflies. So also check out our store. You can get these fun little butterflies that you can use. But this is one of our favorite here too. A pencil topper or you might want just one to fly on your finger. Or if you're going to vault say and you wear a name tag at the Concordia Language, maybe you want one to hang on to your name tag string. <laughs> Extra plug for you all. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, oh, one more thing before I go. I cannot stop talking. Um, a celebration for today is our founder, um, Laddie Elwell. It is her birthday today. So, happy birthday to Laddie Elwell. Thank you, everybody. I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. And uh, my colleagues will be giving other presentations every day between now and then and after that.